The way I be thinking is some different, some different, nigga. The way they be hating is some different, some different. Don't compare with them lames, I'm some different. I'm some different, some different, I'm some different, I'm some different, I'm some different. Now I don't roll with these niggas, roll, I smoke some different. See that little mommy that's right beside me, she's some different, she's some different. Might whip the farm shit, then tomorrow I'm in some different. Cause I'm some different, they know I'm some different. We woke him down to his death, no nine lives like a cat He was thinking with his dick, so he died with his strap I'd never go back to fake friends or fake love For my dreams, yeah, I dug Got this shit about the mud All left with the two supplies We carry tools, they talking plies Walk him down like Michael Myers We send him up, his time expires Still shooting to the gym Still spinning till we dizzy Still waiting on them niggas who said they gon' get up with me On the green like Paul Pierce With time, it was hard, yeah Nights we really starved, yeah Forced me get a job, yeah Had to push myself Try to leave me on the shelf Did this shit with no help Never asked how I felt Never cared for the switch side And left my bitch, she was dick riding Yo, what's up with y'all, man? It's your boy Coach Davis Live from South Korea, bro Hope y'all doing good and all that Hope you I know it get rough out here with the mental health shit and all that, bro. I'm already knowing. You know, I try to get on this app and I try to be as raw as I can, bro. Because at the end of the day, like, this shit not a craft. This shit is a vibe for me. I feel like I just want people to cut on my channel and feel like they connecting with something real, not something that's trying to get something out of you. I could, I could show you my YouTube studio, bro. I don't make no money doing this, bro. I don't make nothing. I care about the spiritual get back of putting out shit to help niggas that I never met day in my life. Niggas that I'm not seeing the effect that I'm having on besides what you tell me. And hopefully that that just just do the, do something for you. It's, it's just all about you, bro. Like, I'm just tired of living in a world where everybody doing something for something. Like, yo, I'm doing this for me in this way or that way. Like, bro. Even if, even if I get rich doing something else, if I get a bag doing something else, I'm not going to stop doing this. Even if I'm slowly climbing in subscribers and, bro, I don't, I don't do it for that, bro. I don't do it for that. I do it because I know it's rough out here. Everybody just gets some sort of kick out of seeing somebody struggling, out of hearing about some bad situation that they going through, out of hearing about, bro, let me tell y'all something, man. I was talking to my men from back home that I grew up with, bro. We went to middle school together. We grew up together. I got back in tune with him because I seen he was doing his music shit. I found him somehow through another one of my men that I seen was doing his music shit. So, I was ready to smoke this shit. I mean, but yo, so. I'm like, yo, is this what's euphoric? Because I've already been on my spiritual journey, trying to connect with my inner child, just like, you know, trying to, like we doing this path with the SR and the NoFab shit, man. Just like healing ourselves, going within, reflection, fucking facing ourselves, fucking sitting with ourselves. And bro had a huge impact on me back in middle school, man, because I ain't going to lie. Like, we didn't start off as the closest friends. I'm going to just say that. Like, we ain't have the greatest relationship, but at the end of the day, like I always fake looked up to bro when I was in middle school. I was a little scrawny dude in middle school, wasn't really tough like that. And you know, niggas, niggas in middle school was picking on me and shit. You know what I'm saying? He was fake picking on me and shit. Niggas was taking my sandwiches and shit. Yeah, we, we just gonna, we gonna talk about it, bro, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And just as an older nigga, as a spiritual older nigga, that is not no, oh, because this happened in the past. Like, we got over that shit. We ended up being mad cool when we was young. Shit like that. And I end up, long story short, I seen him on the gram. I hit him up, showed him some love and all that. And we just talking to see, telling me a situation. You know, mom Dukes had passed and all that. 
He was in jail for six years because the hood got indicted, shit like that. So, you know, he telling me how much he care about the music shit, how he'll go broke trying to pay for the music shit because he want to win that bad. And I get it because that's how the grind goes. Sometimes when you so hungry for some shit, you willing to spend your last dollar on that shit. I done did that shit myself back in the days when I actually cared about doing music too. Like when I cared like years ago, way before YouTube, when my subscribers, y'all know, like the go get the money SOS the wolf shit. When I was doing that, like this shit right here, when I was doing, oh, go get the money or like the Pablo video. Well, the flexion I got on there. I was putting up my last bit of money that I did not have to be paying for no videos. Like I was taking mad money on my checks, damn near going broke too, pretty much broke, to try to look fly in a video, to try to do a video. Like I done been there. And like just out of love, because he was telling me like nobody really like support him like that. Nobody really like willing to like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just like, and I get it. I know how the city is. You know what I'm saying? I know how the city is. Everybody fake, fake, fake. You know what I'm saying? So like, just because I made it out, you know what I'm saying? And like, I'm seeing bro that I grew up with. I don't know, it's, I guess it was just hard to see him going through that because I, I grew up with the nigga and like, even though we've been through certain shit, it's like we grown now. It's like, just like you hear about the New York drill dudes talking about, yo, those are my ops, but like freedom. Cause like, I don't wish jail on nobody. Like, I feel like this how I felt about bro. It's just like, I don't wish, being in the hood, having a grind, having a scrape and scramble sometimes and nobody really supporting you and like you going through shit out there in the hood. And I'm just like, yo, bro, I done lost too many niggas in that shit to jail, to death. I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't trying to lose you, bro. So like, if I could be here for you the best that I can, I'm on the phone, talk to this nigga, real street nigga about no fat, about SR, about aura, about spirituality, about calisthenics, about diet. And on the back, and I threw this nigga $1,000, nigga, off the rip. I'm like, yo, take this. And I told him, I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to do with nothing. You make it, and I'm investing in you for doing your thing. I just want to, for me, I just don't want to see niggas stuck. That's just how I felt. Because motherfuckers want to get on this app and talk so much about spiritual this, I'm spiritual that. And I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But motherfuckers don't have their hand in nothing on the, on, the, on the outside. Motherfuckers don't have their hand in nothing behind the scenes. So, like, at the end of the day, I'm not finna just be talking that shit. I'm walking it. If I feel a certain type of way about niggas being stuck in the hood, I want to see niggas win. I'm putting out messages. I really grew up with this nigga. I don't even care if his music wasn't the best music. I ain't care about none of that. I just cared about that. This is a nigga I grew up with. I got a relationship with this nigga because it's my brother. Cause we done been through shit, you know what I'm saying? We done, bro, we done been through mad shit, bro. Mad shit, bro, so it's just like, I just felt like this was my opportunity to do the shit that I be talking about doing. I'm like, yo, I'm about to help this nigga any way that I could. I'm putting my money, me and wifey putting money in the stocks and shit, flipping money in the stocks, so I'm just like, yo, like, that shit keep doing this thing, my money keep making money for me, and I got some extra money on the back end, cause like, I'ma keep it a buck, like, South Korea been cool, but like, I been deviating low key, going out, fucking with the South Korean bitches on some, on some dumb shit, stressing my wife out, cause I'm over here talking about that I'm, it's hard for me to, you know what I'm saying, cause I ain't been with her for so long, and like, I just needed some female touch, it's down the third, I did not, deviate to the point where I, I stuck my piece in nothing. I did not do that. But like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm spending money on drinks. I'm coming from the club. I done blew hundreds of dollars and shit. I'm just like, yo, like, I want to put my, like, I'm over here blowing that. Yeah, I'm making it back. But at the end of the day, like, if I could throw him that type of money that I would do if I, from deviating and I could just go throw him that and he could actually put that shit to use and like, Bro, we on the phone, I sent him that, bro. Bro shed tears, bro. And I'm just like, bro, that shit, you don't know how good that shit felt, bro. I'm, bro, that shit felt so good to me, bro. All I cared about was that he appreciated it, bro. I didn't even care about being his manager. I ain't care about him being my artist. I ain't care about trying to, yo, I put my money in and you, you owe me. Bro, I dead ass don't care, bro. It's just something with my heart, my nigga. When I'm put my heart into some shit, I don't give a fuck about nothing. I really don't. I dead ass don't, bro. You know what I'm saying so, and there's some other shit going on. 
You know what I'm saying? Me and him, we doing business and shit. You know, I'm trying to do the best I can to understand his passion for the music. He trying to put me on game. We done went back and forth about certain shit, about our opinions, about shit. Because we brothers at the end of the day, man. But I told him, like, I don't care about niggas knowing what I'm actually doing. I don't got to publicly be known to be your manager. None of that shit. I just want to... I don't want to see nothing happen to you, nigga, because I told him I'd be devastated. I don't want to hear about you on the news. I done lost niggas to seeing niggas on the news, niggas going to jail before the fucking YouTube shit, after the YouTube shit. Y'all done seen, I posted one of my other mans that got booked for killing a nigga on camera. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I was on the phone talking to him about spiritual shit, but then I had fake gave up on him because I felt like, you know what I'm saying? Couple weeks later, I see this man on the news, bro. So it's just like, I actually care, bro. I told him on some passion and shit, like, yo, bro, I don't even care about music, bro. I don't care about music. I feel like music, if anything, is a vibe. It's not a craft. People think music is a craft. Music is a vibe. When I press play on some shit, I don't give a fuck about the craft. Nobody cares about the craft. Why you think people like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar is underappreciated? That proves my point right there. Music is not a craft. Music is a vibe. Get in there and be authentic. Let it come off. Try to one take the shit if you could. Let motherfuckers feel it from how you felt it when you first heard the beat and you putting the shit pen to paper. Or you wanna hear the beat and you want motherfuckers to, you know, you wanna punch in on feel me? Like just I don't know. That's why my music, I feel like got a certain type of feel to it. When you listen to my songs, trauma. The New York drill beat shit that I did. You know what I'm saying? The the 1942 flows. That's all vibe shit. Why you think I could shape shift in all three different of those vibes? I could step into some trauma shit with that trauma uh, song where it sounds like I could get on some like straight Biggie Smalls. I could have a whole catalog of an album that sound like trauma. And that would be crazy. But then niggas heard me on the New York drill shit where I could sound like I could get on some demon shit, Dark Knight, Batman shit. And I could feel me like talk that pain on a different type of note. And then you could see me doing that with a couple more songs with a little catalog of that. And then you see me on the uh, from the stool sipping Don Julio. I snow taste, man. This shit got me going. So I was facing the hood like, but what's wrong, man? I was dead pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yo, one of my other mans. It's another situation going on with him. He went AWOL just recently. I was just chopping it up with him for three hours about his situation. He going through it with wifey and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he got about that situation. He from Philly. He in the army, but like wifey still at home. She going through fucked up shit with her family. You know what I'm saying? And like that's low key stressing him out. He already got a like, not the best relationship with his family. So I already know he feel jaded. I know how that could feel, but then you trying to do the best you could for your wifey. She may not understand how jaded you are from the shit that you have been through because women got their emotions and they don't understand what it's like to live in this world damn near numb and emotionless because like you just that wounded, bro. So it's like you try to put that to the side and you try to be there for them emotionally the best that you can, but like, that shit, like, that shit not easy, bro. This dude picked up one day. The other day, he just he just left. He got on a plane, left. He got caught up, arrested. They got him hold. Feel me? They about to dishonorable discharge him, bro. Just like that, bro. I was talking to him the other day for three hours about a situation, trying to do the best that I could to help him. So don't get me wrong. I feel at peace. Like, I did the best that I could. But, like... Come on, bro. He he tried to, apparently, he tried to lie to leadership and tell him, yo, my grandpa died. Y'all wasn't trying to put through the Red Cross because how the homie work is they'll put through a Red Cross shit where, like, you could leave for, like, two weeks to a month if somebody immediate in your family die. So, but they only care about immediate family, meaning wife, kids, parents, siblings. They don't care about auntie, uncle, grandmas, best friends, cousins nephews nieces they don't care about none of that and it's you know i guess it's probably fucked up but like if you really know how to talk and you be real with them you might fuck around and look out for you and still let you go handle that but at the end of the day the army rules is just immediate family 
and he left on his own terms. On some entitled shit as if the army supposed to give a fuck, but we on deployment right now. You just you just cooked yourself. You, we on deployment. They don't give they don't trust you no more. You are not trustworthy, bro, because you did what you wanted to do because you felt like you had shit figured out. Like the I be trying to tell these young niggas, bro. That's why y'all young niggas need to get y'all mind right because y'all be thinking y'all know everything and y'all get so strong, head driven on some shit. Y'all think y'all just got it all figured out. Come on, man. Like he just crashed all the way out for what? Now that shit on his record and he's never gonna be able to come back from that. And it's not worth it, bro. It's not worth it. Listen, man, like, I ain't gonna lie, I felt good. Talked to the homie, though, that I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? I felt good. But, like, at the end of the day, man, like, this is what I care about, bro. I told him, I'm like, yo, bro, I don't care if for niggas to come listen to my songs for my own personal gain on some shit like how most of these artists be doing. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to do that either. Because at the end of the day, I feel like what really matter is to fuck around and put messages out for people to stop killing themselves, to be there for people that would never have nobody there for them. Because if you've been through that, you know what that shit like. I straight up, from the moment that I came from going through some shit like that, from being put on the back burner by my whole family, being jaded and shit, I'm like, yo, I feel like it would mean the world to me what would matter to me in this world, bro? I'm, I'm trying to find my purpose after that shit. I'm like, yo, bro, I feel like, like, what the fuck? Like, bro, my moms don't like, my family don't like, like, what the fuck? What, like, what do I, like, what do I, what do I, like, what's the point, my nigga? And I found purpose in being like, yo, if I can help people from being strong enough to muscle through this shit, and I fuck around, get my body right, get my mind right, get my money right, get my, give me a love life and all that shit, and just situate myself in a way where like now, it's niggas that can relate to my situation and I'm seeing how hard it is to pull myself through. I'm like, yo, imagine how many niggas is going full short because I'm feeling how hard this shit is to just walk every day through this shit and feeling this shit and knowing that this shit is my reality because of just how people is and how everybody turned their back on me and I was homeless and nobody was trying to look out for me and everybody was just like, yo, you're a grown ass man type shit. And it's just like, I know it's, mad dudes out here that's like it's not gonna really be able to muscle through that shit on their own and it's gonna be hard for them to process how to do that so in my mind i'm just like yo if i could be there for for dudes in that type of way then i want to figure out how to do that man. and that's why i felt like i found purpose in that you know what i'm saying so yeah, I told him, bro, I'm just like, bro, try not to care too much about that music shit in a, in that, in a certain type of way. Like, you want to make sure that you just on some, like, I'm going to live my life, do me day to day. But, like, when I feel like I want to put something out, it's just on some, like, for me, it's not no, like, oh, I'm trying to get on and I got to fuck with this person and that person to get my shit posted here, get my shit posted there. Like, it's not even about that. It's about that, if this your passion, like, for me, just vibe out with that shit, bro. Same thing that I'm doing. Like, I'm not over here trying to take this shit super duper serious, trying to make this shit super duper perfect. Because that's not what it's for. This is for some longevity shit, because I'm just chopping it up with y'all. But guess what? This shit got value for the future, because, like, this is just a moment in time that we vibing. But as far as the army shit, man, you know, shit smooth. I ain't gonna lie for those that's winning, for those that care enough about me. It, it's smooth right now. Like, we about to do a field event. I'm, we about to be climbing a mountain for six days with with our heavy ass ruck book bag on, just like the Call of Duty shit with the, with the rucksack on. We about to have our plate carriers and shit. We about to be climbing a mountain for six days, training out there with the South Korean army, bro. And that's fire coming from where I'm coming from and doing, being able to do shit like that, having shit like this to look back on. Like I was just telling wifey, I don't even care about uh, being a sergeant. I care about being a sergeant only because I'm from the hood. And just to be like, yo, I came from the hood and then I became a sergeant in the army. I just feel like that's just fire. And it's also gonna be good to be able to like, for me, 
It's just like to motivate, just to motivate niggas. So I told bro, like, we was fake having a back and forth when I told her, like, bro, all I care about is putting messages out there to stop niggas from committing suicide, bro. To be there for niggas, to help niggas find purpose in they so, bro. I want niggas to be their best version. I really, truly want that for niggas, bro. Anybody that watch my channel, I don't got to know you from nothing. I just want you to watch my video. Hopefully you connect with this shit. That's why I do it in a way like where we chopping it up and not on no weird YouTube shit where you feel like you watching the, feel me? Like, I'm, I don't do that. Like, if I'm chopping it up, I'm chopping it up. Like, I just feel like I'm tired of that. I feel like the internet is mad weird. Everybody doing shit for their own personal gain, but then be mad when everybody else treat them like that. Like, yo, why I feel like nobody care about me? Why I feel like everybody got ill intentions for me and shit? You do the same shit that everybody else doing though, bro. You doing the same shit. It's a fucking cycle. It's not personal. You, you getting back what you put out too. You not that genuine, so why you expect people to be genuine with you? You not genuine. You get what you put out. It's no if, ands, or buts. It's no rocket science, my nigga. You get what the fuck you put out. And it may not happen immediately. You may get crossed a little bit. You, maybe motherfucker might get you fucked up and like take your shit for granted to stand third. But as long as you stay 10 toes on that shit, you're gonna get in alignment with that shit. But motherfuckers be so entitled, like the shit gotta happen tomorrow right now to stand a third because you going out your way because you feel like you so tough or, or you so Neo from Matrix or some shit. Like, oh, like just off the strength of me doing that, people supposed to just like, no bro, that's not how the shit works. If you really that, then really be that in all shapes and forms and circumstances, or it's not gonna work out the way you want it to. Simple as that. Like, I don't know what motherfuckers be thinking this shit is, but that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanna see y'all win, man. That's all I care about. All I care about is not no likes and no comments, bro. I don't care about, yo, your video fire. Yo, I don't care, it's not about me, bro. This shit is not about me, bro. Let me make that shit clear. This shit is not about me, bro. Anytime I get on this app, it is never about me, bro. I don't give a fuck about me when I do this shit. When I do this shit, it is about y'all. It is about trying to feel me. So like, if y'all niggas want me to talk about something, if you want to feel me, like it's about y'all. Because I know what it's like to be struggling out here and to be on your own and have to find a fucking way out here. And then when you do find your fucking way, you feel the pressure of not wanting to go back to where the fuck you was. So now you feel like you got this weight on your shoulders even trying to manage from now not being fucked up no more to now. Like it just never stopped, but it's like you gotta stay, you gotta keep grinding, you gotta stay 10 toes out here, bro. You have to, no matter what. But like people just take certain shit too serious, bro. All I care about is the gym for real. Like I just wanna get, I just want to get up for real. Like I just, and I want to do my yoga. I want to get more flexible. I want to get more blood flow in my body. I want to have this oneness with my body and shit. Motherfuckers talk all the spiritual shit like it end at SR and NoFap. Like, yeah, okay, cool. You're not a point addict no more. But like, what about your fitness shit? Yeah, you lifting weights, but like, what about your body weight shit? You don't want to be able to do 50 muscle up. I just seen the bros from New York City. Fucking Akeem Supreme, Rip Right. He just posted. Akeem Supreme doing 50 pull-ups, beat some, beat one of the other bros. They was going at it in Brooklyn. He beat him 50 pull-ups straight, bro. Come on, man. Like, you doing all this weightlifting shit, but if you not able to do shit like that, like, why would you not want to be able to do 50 muscle-ups? That's what I'm trying to get to. That's why I be doing straight calisthenics. I don't do nothing else. I don't really, I don't really lift weights like that or nothing like that. I'm trying to master my own body weight. And for me, if I'm doing weights, I might as well do weighted calisthenics. Like, what's the point of me doing some stationary ad for me? I would do some weighted push-ups. I'll do some weighted burpees. I'll do some weighted pull-ups. I'll do some weighted muscle-ups. Like, I'll do some weighted dips. I'll do, for me, that's just what I be on. That's just how I feel. Yeah, bro. I appreciate y'all tuning into this video. Hopefully, for me. Like I said, man, I do this shit for y'all, bro. I do this shit for y'all, bro. So it's just like, because it just hurt me. Like like I said, to see the homie I grew up with trying to grind and shit. He turned to 29, you know, still in the trenches. We done been in the trenches our whole life already. He about to be 30 years old, still in the trenches. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just, bro, and if I can't, 
physically help none of y'all like in a in a way financially because i be knowing like motherfuckers ain't looking for no handout at the end of the day you want to do it for you because at the end of the day it's your life ain't nobody out here looking for no handouts it's, it's your life you want to make it happen for yourself and you can but it's just it's not easy bro it's a lot of it's a lot of real tactical shit that you got to understand about the spiritual shit that you have to do and you have to take your feelings out of this shit but you're gonna get caught up putting your feelings back in it and then you got to take your feelings back out and then you got to not try to feel guilty about making mad mistakes over and over you got to always try to keep your fucking chin up all this shit you got to try to keep your back string your shoulders poked out even though shit getting heavy and you know what i'm saying like it's real bro it's real but just keep your fucking head up out here man that's all I'm saying, bro. Just don't give up on yourself. Keep on coming back to the journey. And for me, do some yoga, meditate, do your calisthenics. Right, bro, make sure y'all working out, man. For real. Make sure you mastering yourself. You have to. And, and you know what I'm saying? If you, you know what I'm saying? Shit get real. You going through shit out here. Just, just know, bro. You make a... You make an emotional decision, you gonna have to live with that shit, bro. Like, bro, he did some AWOL shit. He fuck around, went from South Korea, ended up in San Diego. They found him in San Diego. Now they about to have him on watch. They about to be watching him and hawking him. And then you about to get the boo. You about to get a dishonor boo. Like, now what? And then you lied to niggas, telling niggas that your 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 peoples died but then they calling your peoples and they like yo we didn't even know he left like we don't know nothing about nothing so like now you lied about your just just to try to get out the situation you lied meaning that if you didn't leave for your peoples dying that means you left for something going on with your bitch what are you going to be able to do for her if your situation is fried and what you going to do if she switch up on you after that that's why I'm saying dudes just be crashing out over women. Like, what is you doing, bro? What is going to happen if she just decide to be like, yo, you know what? I don't want to be here no more. What you going to do? What you going to force her? You're not going to be able to do shit. Like, bro, and, and then that's over. Now you got to move on. Now you got to take that shit on the chin. Yo, I lived my whole army career. You know what I'm saying? Like, I threw, I mean, I threw away my whole army career to go see what was going on with her. I just up and left. I ain't even try to talk to nobody to try to help me out. I just did what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that shit is not going to age well. It's not going to mean nothing. Because at the end of the day, as a man, we got to be dependable on some leadership type of shit. And what type of leader can you be as a man when you doing shit that's taking you out of that position to be a dependable type of, feel me? No matter how hard shit get, bro, you, you got to make sure that you're in a stable situation. And that's one thing about the military. It is a very stable situation. It is a very, like, you know what I'm saying? This shit is a, it's a situation. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Up the strength of my bro telling me he, ain't, he don't get a lot of support. I'm like, yo, bro. I just want you to, like, I just, I did that not even about the money, not about no get back, not about no getting my money back, not about flipping my money through him. It was about the spiritual shit. It's about the karma shit. It's about, like, you lost your mom. She died. Your hood acting, acting fake weird. This going on. You just came out of jail. You trying to find your way. You got a criminal record. You probably can't find no job. You got to have your foot in the streets, but you fake out there probably making scared money because you can't make for me because like you got to be on your toes you got to watch your back because you know you just came home so i'm like yo bro i just don't want you to crash out on yourself mentally give up on yourself like nobody out in this world care about you you know what i'm saying yeah we've been through what we've been through we was kids we got over that shit as kids too we was just kids anyway you know what i'm saying like i would never in my life let no nigga bully me as a grown man anyway like we was kids this and the third we was kids that shit don't define us at the end of the day i still got love for you we still for me that shit is memories that we could laugh about like, bro, and I just want to be there for that nigga, bro. So when I gave him that money, he appreciated that shit. That's dead ass all I cared about. And that shit, that shit made my year. And it's going to help me get through the rest of this deployment till I see my wife because I've been struggling not being with my wife, bro. Because that shit is not easy, bro. To not feel no female touch from a female that you know really love you. And y'all on the phone every single day and you horny as hell thinking about that. You want to do this, you want to do that. And you fighting them urges, bro. That shit is dead ass not easy, bro. I'm out there getting drunk and shit with the homies. 
then I got to step back because certain, certain dudes is like, they don't know how to control themselves off the liquor. They want to be fighting and shit like that. So now I can't even pop out. Well, not all of them, but just, with, just certain ones. Like, you, bro, be doing too much. It's like, now I'm not trying to go out there. They heard a couple situations about some fights going on. And now it's like, me personally, like I done told them, like, I fuck around, get out there in a the situation and you cause it because you want to be Superman to be tough. Guess what? I'm going to defend you when we out there, but guess when we get back? I'm going to put hands on you when we get back. I'm going to take that shit personal because now if we get caught up in an indictment situation, like how hood niggas be getting caught up in when they be caught up in that gang shit and then you get indicted, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all was doing certain shit and that shit caught up and then you can't snitch on niggas and you might not have been doing exactly what he was doing, but when certain niggas get charged and it's a full-on indictment, you can't say nothing. And that's the same shit. We fuck around, get caught up out here in a whole nother country because you want to be Superman because you felt like a nigga disrespects you. You want to be super tough, put hands on niggas, damn near kill niggas and shit. Now what? Now what's going to happen when we all in that same situation? I'm not trying to throw you under the bus and say what the fuck happened. And they looking at me like, oh, you just as guilty niggas. You don't want to say what happened. You want to defend him. All right, cool. We going to make you have the same consequences. Like, yo, bro, I'm not going to put myself in that situation. That's not going to happen. So just make sure y'all being careful out here and you can have love for motherfuckers, but make sure that you looking out for yourself. Make sure you're being safe out here because at the end of the day, when you in a fucked up situation, nobody is going to be there for you for real. And everybody going to look at you like you fucked up. At the end of the day, your family love and respects you until you don't love and respect yourself enough to make the right decisions out here. And that's just the real. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave it at that.